<laughs> it is. It's a large mouth, a little large mouth. Oh, that's fun. Come here, buddy. All right, come on. Come on, come on. You're done. I'll let you go. Ah, just a little large mouth. You know, there's a lot of folks that uh, don't like the idea of going out right after a tournament thinking that the, the fish just really got hammered. And they did. You know, after a tournament weekend and and it's still so peaceful out here. We're out here during the week, but uh, it was a big tournament here. We're at Apache Lake. Beautiful lake. I love this lake. Always have. It's clear water. Springtime, part of my favorite time of fishing. But what, what do you do when a, when a lake really gets pressured high like that? Well, one of the first things I try to do is downsize. Downsizing is very important when the fish are real skittish, when, they, when they've seen every bait come by and uh, you come up to them and they just start running, well, you downsize. And what better bait to downsize with than the sticko? This is the albino color. And uh, I'm throwing it on a number two, not a two aught, a number two red hook. I don't know what it is about that little red hook, but it works good. And we're just throwing it out. We're seeing little dark spots here on the lake. We're throwing it out there and letting it fall. I'm throwing it on an eight pound test. I have an eight pound test leader, um, fluorocarbon leader with my braid line. You wanna use braid line. That way you can get a long cast. Now, to help me with that long cast, I'm using a seven foot medium action Taipan rod. And the way this rod is set up, I'm telling you, you you'll get one of the longest casts you can get with a, a spinning outfit or a bait casting outfit, the way the eyes are designed on this rod. And I love this rod right now. It's, it's, <laughs> I won a tournament, a Wild West Bass tournament with it at uh, Lake Pleasant early in the, in the winter. And uh, it was the drop shot rod, but these rods are phenomenal. They're all graphite rods. And I'll tell you what, this is the Elite Series and one of my favorite rods. But this is what you gotta have as a setup. And basically what I'm doing is going into the shallows here at Apache Lake, and I'm <clears throat> throwing up, and if I find a little dark spot that looks like there might be a bed or something like that, but if you throw this thing up in the shallows, it's really, really, it's a finesse technique. It's nothing big, and the fish don't feel too intimidated by it, but uh, they'll go up and hit this thing. It's unbelievable. So uh, what we'll do, on a highly pressured lake like this is go throw this little small three inch sticko and uh, see what we can't do today. They make them in a bunch of different colors. You know, Houdini is one of my favorite colors. Got a little copper in it when you're trying to imitate the crawdads and things like that. But I'll tell you what, right now we're gonna throw this because I can see it. Not to mention, uh, it's got more of a little, it's hard to tell right now, but it's got a little pink. This albino has a little bit of pink in it. And it, you know, there's trout in here, rainbow trout. And uh, so kind of looks like could be a little rainbow trout color or something like that. But that albino is really a good looking color. And we're gonna kind of throw that around a little bit today. See what happens, check out the lake, see what we can catch and just take what the lake will give us. Got him. <laughs> Come on, let light line. <laughs> These are fun fish, man. All right, you've had enough. <laughs> Not a giant smallie, but a beautiful smallie. Just throwing up shallow. You know, this is a lot of fun to do, but this technique is really good for real shallow water. I want to say from zero to five foot of water. You know, if you're going to throw something, uh, if you're going to get out a little deeper or you want to throw the bigger sticko, but this uh, this one here is a lot of fun to throw when you're up really shallow. And all I'm doing is I'm going through the flats. I'm looking for the little chunk rock, little black areas, anything that looks like a black hole or anything that looks like a rock point going out, you can throw it up on top of that rock point. And I'll tell you something else that makes this bait a lot of fun. As it's falling, you can give it really slow twitches. You know, I can make it look just like a soft jerk bait. And that's what's so cool about it. It's falling, it's falling. If the fish are looking at it, not hitting it, you can just soft jerk bait it in and, and they'll whack it. But when I first hit the lake, the first thing I'm gonna do is start hitting the shallows this time of year. In the spring, the fish move up in the shallows. So 
you'll want to hit the shallows. And Apache Lake's great for largemouth and smallmouth bass. So it makes it for a lot of fun. Very versatile lake, love it. Oh man, there's a good fish right there. You know, I gotta tell you something that's really important to understand about doing this shallow water fishing this time of year. And it is a lot of fun. Man, if you don't have power poles on your boat, you are missing out because I just dropped my power poles just to look over here. I see a few little black spots just so I can kind of look around. It really allows you to stay still, not move, not hit your trolling motor. And I look over here and I'm like, there's three or four beds. Now a lot of them are plucked, but somebody missed this one. I'll throw out there and see what it's worth. I'm gonna throw out there a little bit farther. It's a little bit deeper, but we'll see if that fish will come up and, and hit that bait. It's a slow fall process. That underspin. <laughs> what it is about this bait. Boy, they sure like it. This bed's a little bit deeper, so the whole thing is, is uh, when you when you get to something like that, I like to just throw something that's got a little weight to it. Ah, got him that time. Oh yeah, good large mouth. <laughs> he did a little underspin. <laughs> oh, we got him hooked pretty good, I think. <laughs> Come on, buddy. You're done. One more. Last thing you want is a bunch of hooks in here. Of course, that's only got one hook in it, but I'll tell you what, when you get into a little bit of that deeper water, sometimes you find a little bit bigger bass. There you go. Let's get him back right away. <laughs> now, whole different ball game here. This particular bait is an awesome little bait. And I, I'll tell you what, I'm using a Kitek little 3.5 swim bait on an underspin, okay? With a little blade and uh, you can take and cast this thing when it's windy up on points and, and things like that. A 3 8 ounce, a half ounce is a lot of fun. You can even get them in, you know, smaller than that. I like them a little bit heavier when I'm fishing the deeper water, you know, because I want to drag towards the bottom a little bit. But, you know, I'm throwing it, ooh, and I got to change that out too. But I'm throwing it with a, with a 12 pound fluorocarbon line, okay? You could throw it on 10, 12 pound, I like 12 and I'm using a lot heavier stick. This is a, a, a medium, or this is a heavy actually, Taipan rod, and uh, I'm throwing it on a 7.9, so it's a long, so I get a big, good old hook set when they hit it, and I can fight the fish a little bit, but I wanna be able to get that hook in that fish and be able to fight the fish real good. So, you know, I'll use a heavy or a medium heavy is really good for this type of outfit, but I'll tell you what, what ends up happening is this bait falls, and when it falls to the bottom, everybody thinks, oh, well, the blade just laying there doesn't look natural. But when you pop it up, the blade will flash, and when that blade flashes, the bass just crush it. And, you know, I threw in there a few times and, and uh, had that fish. There's, there's a fish right there, to be honest with you. We'll throw it down there and see what, he, what he's got to say, but see how it just kind of flutters down? He sees it. Oh, we got him that quick. Did you see that? Oh! You just let it flutter, and you pop it once, and boom, they're right on it. Now, a little trick of the trade, okay? There's always a trick of the trade when you're throwing a bait like this. My little swim baits this time of year, I love to put a little bit of a chartreuse tip on there. You could buy one of them spike it pins that have chartreuse on it, or dip it in a little bit of chartreuse, and uh, that's what, what I did here, and you can see, because the bluegill, that these bass don't want in their beds, the bluegill actually have a chartreuse tip to them. So, you know, we'll go around and see if we can catch some fish on this too, but I'll, I'll guarantee you, this is an awesome little, little uh, bait for these fish when they get in the shallows like this, and you'll have a lot of fun with it. So we got a couple of baits we can play with. You know, we're out here searching around, looking, and uh, I'll tell you what, it, that little bait that, uh, that sticko is a great bait, but there's other baits out there that work well too, and this is one of them, that little underspin. You'll definitely want to want to try this. Well, 
kind of give it a quick little jerk so it'll kind of fall right in there. He sees it now. Got him! You see that? <laughs> That's so much fun. <laughs> little finesse fishing. Got you that time, you little dude. <laughs> you thought you were going to get away, didn't you? <laughs> He's so much fun. Oh my goodness, come on. Come on. Them smallmouth are fun on this lake. All right. So are the largemouth. No, they're all fun, but boy. You know, the key to throwing this bait, too, is when you're fishing real shallow water like this, if you, if you can see across with your polarized sunglasses, see across the flats and see something swimming way up in front, it's always best to make those real long casts and just let it fall really slow. They can't stand it. This thing falls so slow, I can't stand it. <laughs> but man, I'm telling you, it catches fish. Got him. Oh, yeah, little nice smallmouth. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Come on, baby. You ain't that big, but you're a fun fish, that's for sure. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that is so much fun. All right. That little sticko. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I'll let you go. Give me a chance to get you out there. Little small mouth bass. Looky there. You know, when you're throwing this bait, I think one thing that's really, really important when you first throw it out there is to make sure that you don't keep your line tight. Let your line lay on top of the water and let the, let the bait fall. These baits are so light, you're light lining them, you're, you're throwing them weightless, and and uh, boy, I'll tell you what, they just come up and crush this bait. But if it's, if you have your line tight and it'll be pulling the bait, you don't even realize it, but you're pulling the bait. So you wanna make sure, that's one of the reasons I like using one that I can see too, you know, is because uh, that way I can watch the fish actually hit the bait. It's a lot of fun. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing very important in throwing this little rig right here, it's really light. It's weightless and it's light. You have to find a small braid, a 10 pound or a 12 pound, even an eight pound braid would work great. An eight pound braid would be better. But I'm using a 10, use a braid line, and then tie on a fluorocarbon leader. And the purpose of using the braid line is you don't get any twist in your line that way and you'll be able to cast this thing a lot farther without working yourself to death. With regular fluorocarbon or monofilament, you'd have to cast a lot harder and you won't get as far out. All right, that's my tip of the week. Good luck. Got him that time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I nailed you that time, didn't I, you turkey? <laughs> Come on. A lot better bass down there, deeper. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Beautiful. You know, these fish are so healthy in here. So healthy and a lot of fun. <laughs> That's on that underspin. You know, a lot of times when you throw that thing out there and let it fall, the fish will actually just track it down as it's falling and that blade turning, they'll just come up and rip it. And you gotta set the hook quick because <laughs> it's, as soon as they hit it, they're gone, even with the exposed hook. But it's a lot of fun to throw. And I'll tell you what, if you haven't tried one of these, go pick some up, you know, because they're a lot of fun to throw. Put a new little swimmy on there. We'll go down the bank, see if we can have some more fun. You know, anytime spring gets around, water temperature is key. 
and I watch for water temperatures reach, reaching 58, 59, 60 degrees, fish will start moving into the shallows, roaming. After it hits 61, 62 degrees, you can find a lot of them being solid in the shallows. And, and what I mean by the shallows is uh, you want to hit flat. It can be on the main lake. Backs of coves are great too. I kind of like to hit out on the flats on the main lake sometimes where the fish aren't getting beat up as bad, but I'll tell you what, either way, uh, the fish are gonna move up into the shallows and you need to be there during the springtime. Now March, what ends up happening a lot of times is a wide open bite. You can throw jerk baits. You can throw soft jerk baits. You can throw drop shots. You can throw sinkos, wacky sinkos the sticko rig. There's just so many things you can do this time of year. The bite actually starts widening. So you used to throw the drop shot and you used to throw the spoon. Now you want to open your horizons and try different baits this time of year and you'll have a lot of fun out on the water. Largemouth bass came up and took that, that sticko. Just throwing it way up there. <laughs> he's a nice one too. He's running for all he's worth. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, buddy. What a stud. <laughs> now that's a nice largemouth right there. The cool thing about this bait is you can definitely, without a doubt, catch him either the largemouth or the smallmouth on this bait. And he's he's a little chunk. That's two and two and a half pounder. That's the biggest fish of the day on this little dude. It's a beautiful fish. Huh. It's always good to be sure that uh, you get a good pair of polarized sunglasses. I know I preach that this time of year, but anytime during the year, you gotta want a good pair of polarized sunglasses, but you will not, and trust me, if you don't have polarized sunglasses on, you will not be able to see these dark holes. And the whole bank, what you see with these glasses is light. Just everything's light down the bank, and then you'll just see a black spot. And you don't even need to get up there and see if anything's in it. You just throw up in there and a lot of times they're right there. Soft jerk baited it right there. <laughs> yes, I know what you're saying there, pal. Okay, come on. Come on. I'll tell you what, you can come out to Apache Lake and have a lot of fun with these smallmouth with this kind of bait. And what's really cool about it is really versatile. You can let it fall or you can use it as a soft jerk bait. Either way, it really is a lot of fun to throw. Again, it's just a, a number two wide gap Gamagatsu hook. I'm using red. And you can see they've pretty much polished the red off that thing. And then the Sticko from Bass Pro Shops, folks, the three inch, great little bait. And I'll tell you what, they've got them in all different colors. Houdini is another one of my favorite colors. But this albino is really nice. I like it. Thanks for joining me on the show. Get out and try some springtime fishing. You're going to have a lot of fun. Till next time, we'll see you on the water. I'm Johnny Johnson.